Okay, we're down here, surrounded by old iron, and which, iron. Uh, well, that's plastic, that's plastic. <laughs> um, and Comet. Comet. And yeah, you got to come to the class in order what he's going to do with this Comet. But as I'm moving off frame, sorry about that. But you have some really cool cars down here, and obviously this is for your class. Yeah. So. Uh, we teach a number of classes with Dr. Beasley's uh, Future of Detailing. We have one day, we got a two day, we got a three day, and a five day. The three day classes that are held here in sunny Stewart, Florida, it's two days of car detailing, the third day is boat detailing. And the, the first two days, you will detail between six and nine cars. For this class, I got 12 people, and I got six cars here. And let's, this one over here, let's just ramble through them. Yeah, um, before we get there, because I got to get over there to get the remote cam. Um, let me just do my little spiel real quick. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps the numbers out, helps us with the algorithms, and make sure that everybody gets to see this stuff. So let me get over here, get on the remote cam. And real quickly, uh, happy Valentine's Day to my wife, Stacy, who's at home watching. She watches again, Yancy. And to all the ladies out there, it's Valentine's Day. So Aww. Okay, so let's start over okay. here. So this is a 1958 Chevy Impala. It's what you call a survivor car. It's a barn find. It's pretty rough. They've got it mechanically running really good. The brakes work, but it needs a total detail. And one of the things, I think I'm one of the few guys, if the only guy that's ever taught this, but it's called the Comet Technique. And when you have an old single stage paint job like this, like, listen, this thing is rough, okay? Uh, you, could, you could wash and clay this and this or buffing on it. What's gonna happen is your pads are gonna fill it full of uh, oxidized paint. And it's a perfectly acceptable way to, to restore the paint on this car. Here's another option. Take and during the wash process, wash it with Comet. And I know some of you guys are probably going, oh my God, Mike, how can you teach that technique? But I've done it for years. I've done it since the 70s. And you can do this on old single stage paint. But you got to keep in mind, after we wash this with Comet and basically just kind of exfoliate. Kind of liquid so, sandpaper. Exactly, <laughs> liquid sandpaper. But after we exfoliate all the dead paint, we're going to buff this out with wool pads and rotary polishers. So any scouring that takes place with the comet is going to be removed from the first step. But this is here for what I teach is multiple step show car detail. We start with wool pads, first thing, first day. All right, move on to the vet. This is a 1996 Corvette C4 Grand Sport Special Edition. It's got the special suspension package, the very rare red leather interior. Oops, let's see the red leather. And the thing that makes this car unique, the reason I brought this in, and Nancy, you might be able to catch some of the scratching using the overhead lights, like right in here. Okay, so um, these paints are notoriously hard, incredibly hard. So I like to bring in a challenging car for the class to try to correct, and that's what this 96 Corvette is. Plus I like to bring in new cars and old cars. Okay, now this big red glaring thing at me here. This is, this, this is cool, and I actually remember seeing this show when I was a kid. You know, um, I'm a couple years older than you. I've never seen the show. I know, I know what it is, I've just never seen an episode. It's black and white. It's called Car 54, Where Are oh, here. You? There it is. It's a TV show from the 60s, and again, I've never seen it, but this is the guy that become one of the Munsters. Yeah. On the Munsters, and also he was on a show, a, show, a movie, a show Chase, but uh, this is a tribute car. It's not one from the movie set, but it is accurate. You want me to... Want me you, to you, uh, you've been waiting to do it. <laughs> Mike's playing in here. This is what I came into today. He, he was just sitting in the car, what do you call it, uh, doing the siren and the lights. And we've already done a test spot on this for the class. You want to come back here and look at this, Yancey? Um, this is an old single stage paint job. You can see the single stage paint up here on the pad. And I did just one little section here. Whoops, I just touched my own section, so it's got smudges. But this is with Z1. And the difference is just day and night. Can I hold that right for you? Yeah. And go. Yeah. And the thing about this is this section I did is now scroll free, but there's lacquer checking. It's like little cracks in the paint. So there's lacquer checking. You can't fix that. And then up here is a 1941 Chevy pickup street rod. And this here has a custom base coat, clear coat paint job. It is a horrible paint job. 
and my class is going to learn how to dry sand by hand and dry sand by machine and that's what we're going to show the techniques in here on this truck. This uh, Actually, we're going to do this on Friday. And then out in the parking lot is a 1939 Cadillac two-door coupe with base coat clear coat. They're going to learn how to do one step paint correction on it. There's also a 2014 Mercedes Benz with holograms and there's a 25 foot Sea Hunt center console dark blue turned white with oxidation. So an incredibly hands-on class. No chairs, no sitting, no power All right. But that's what we got going on. All right, let me switch over to here. Okay. Oh. Okay, you're on that camera right there. Okay. So the sanding techniques I teach here, and I just want to kind of uh, get a couple things out of the way first place. First, first of all, when you hear the term wet sanding or dry sanding or hand sanding, machine sanding, um, all of this type of sanding, whichever is your preference, should be done on custom paint, not the factory finish on the uh, Hold on one sec. We're, we're having, they're saying they can't hear you. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, you're on. Um, move your little mic closer to your mouth. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. All right. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Is that a cliche? All right. Go ahead. Testing. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. Testing. All right. Go ahead. Just keep talking. Okay. So, um, but all Sandy, whenever you hear the term Sandy, it should be done on custom paint, not factory finishes. And I bring this up because I know there's a lot of confusion about it. And a lot of times someone buys a brand new Corvette, they look at the orange pill, they want to know if some professional detailer can fix it. And the thing is, is even if you can find a professional that's confident to go in, sand that paint job flat, buff it out without burning through anywhere, he's going to have left that clear coat so thin that it's going to suffer clear coat failure down the road. So it's really not a service to you. So really, sanding should be done with custom paint only. And in our classes, I used to bring in demo hoods. I mean, I, ha I found a picture back when I was at Auto Geek. I had 16 demo hoods set up in the garage. That's a lot of demo hoods. And uh, the thing about a demo hood is, it's like working on this table. It's just a flat surface. You do a size about the, of a microfiber tile. You don't really learn anything. As soon as you bring in something like this, this body molding, this hinge here, uh, chrome, you got edges, you got door handles, you got vents. It has impact, you know, you have to start thinking, how am I going to sand this to right. make it look beautiful, but not screw it up at the same time. So it has impact. You really learn how to sand that apart, not sand down a demo hood. So that's what we do. And now in this class, I used to teach wet sanding using the Meguiar's called the Nikken paper, which is an electronics grade sandpaper out of Japan. Um, and that, that's a great way to sand. Man, I got nothing against it. But for the type of sanding I teach, I don't teach the kind of sanding that you would go get hired to do for Dave Kindig on one of his rides. If you want to work for Dave Kindig, get a job at Body Shop. people that actually want to learn something. So how are we looking? We got sound? Testing, testing, sound check, sound check. Okay. Okay, so anyway, I was talking about sanding should only be done to custom paint jobs. I bring in the real deal, real other guys' street rods for you to learn how to sand on. 
because it has impact. So this, I used to teach wet sanding, and now I teach dry sanding. And the reason why is because it's cleaner, it's neater, it's faster. And look, if you're looking for something more in depth, again, get a job at a body shop and learn how to use acrylic blocks and hard block them all. But kind of what I teach is what the average guy, the average detailer could do for somebody's custom car and do a good job, still make a profit and turn out high quality work. And that's dry sanding with the Eagle Abrasives dry sanding system. Okay, so now their system is for both hand and machine. And just real quickly, they have these really nice hand blocks and all their sheets are actually, um, they come in a set of two and there's a perforation so you can just tear off a sheet and then it'll attach right to the Velcro on the interface pad. And they make three or four different interface pads. I think I've got three of them here. They got a super hard one and that's for doing what's called hard blocking. So if you got a lot of major orange pill and you want to get it down flat, you want to use the hard surface. Then they got a medium interface pad. Then they got a very soft interface pad. And for our classes, I like to stick with the medium pad. And um, anyway, so that's how it works. You put the interface pad onto the block, then you take and you line up the sanding sheet so no part of the interface pad is gonna touch the paint, and that hand sanding pad is ready to go. There you go, see? I'll go ahead and dismantle it and show you again. So three different interface, here's hard, and it, look, it's, it's hard. You can't even bend this thing. And that, what that does is keeps all the sanding action on the high points of the orange pill. So you just take down the tops, not going into the, 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 the valleys, because orange pills like hills and valleys. Then you've got this medium block, then you've got the soft block, and I'm using the medium block, and then it just attaches to this really nice ergonomic, easy to hold backing pad. Anyway, when you come to our classes, this is the type of thing you get to learn how to use, as I like to say, on some other dude's street rod. <laughs> Look at Joe. Okay, so um, anyway, so, and then, you know, before you start, and admittedly, this, this is a, probably a garage paint job. It is basically clear, but it's pretty rough. But it, I've already washed this truck, and it absolutely fails the baggy test, okay? So when you feel this, it feels like sand is in the paint job. And you can sand right over that, but what I like to show people is an option, and that's to go ahead and clay it first, and let your, this is a medium grade clay detailing towel. You could use a clay bar, a clay pad, or a clay mitt. But instead of, you know, I'm gonna use the word toast. Instead of toasting or wasting your sandpapers, your sand sheets and this, take all this excess crud off mechanically, just using the normal claying process. Um, sanding sheets from uh, Eagle Abrasives, they're not cheap. They're not the most expensive, but they're not cheap. And it's just more, to me, it's more cost effective and even time effective when you consider switching this, switching this, or switching sheets and switching sanding sheets over and over again, because this over, this is probably dry spray and whatever other pollution was in the air where this thing's been sitting for the last 10 years. But might as well just use your sand or your clay towel to remove all this stuff, and then you'll get more use out of your sanding paper. Okay, so this side of the hood is clay, and of course I'm gonna make my class do the rest of this car. Oh, you're so kind. Okay. And I'm gonna be talking fast and going fast because, you know, we gotta pack in a lot of different tools, techniques, and products real quick. Okay, so now if I try the baggy test, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be a heck of a lot better. Boom, I mean, it is so much better. Okay, so that is how you prep wash clay. Now you're ready to start sanding. Now, one of the things I always teach and practice myself is called the rule of thumb. If you type into Google, the rule of thumb and add my name, Mike Phillips, usually you pull my article up and you'll see my thumb. And what the rule of thumb is, is and it's kind of controversial, um, but what I do is I, I, my thumbnail, and I keep my nails trimmed because I'm a typist and I can't type with fingernails at all, but it's about three quarters of an inch, maybe half an inch in diameter. So that's the basic rule of staying away from edges or raised body molding or raised body lines. And here's why. If you, you can sand right up to the edge, sanding's easy, it's putting scratches in the paint. The tricky part is getting them out 100%, and that's the standard I'm held to, not 90% out, but 100% out. And the problem with sanding right up to edge is then you have to bring something down and buff along that edge to pull those sanding marks out. 
And a lot of times, if you're not careful, you'll burn through the edge, or you'll burn through a raised body line. Now, there's different ways to skin that cat. For example, you can get the rotary attachment in a Pixie or a Rupes Nano and put a, a, a fiber pad, microfiber, wool, whatever it is. Now you can stay right next to it and pull those sand marks off. It's a lot slower than a big wool pad on a rotary polisher, but it will work. But if, if you start to look at how many edges you're gonna have, you're gonna be on that truck for months, okay? So it's fine if it's your own car, and it's fine if the owner's gonna pay you by the hour. But if you're doing this for a set price, you're gonna work, be working for pennies on the dollar, okay? So stay about a thumbnail distance away. And again, you know, you wanna do perfectionist sanding and buffing, go get a job at a body shop and they'll teach you how to do that there. Spend about 10 years and you'll get really good at it. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, maybe in 10 years you'll be good at it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start sanding. And when you are sanding, you want to have a cotton or microfiber towel to pull the sanding uh, dust off the face of the sand sheet and also off of the paint. You don't want to just clean this and then bring this down and load it up with all the paint that you've loosened up. Um, and then all you want to do, so again, remembering the rule of thumb. So, and I always teach people just do a small area, especially if you're new. Like this is about a big as area. This is about a 12 inch by 12 inch microfiber towel. That's about a big as area as you want to tackle. And if you're brand new, you can even tackle something smaller. And, but yeah, just start standing in. And one of the things like, when you're first starting out and you're kind of scared, that's understandable, you should be scared. Sanding down a clear coated paint job is, is tricky. Um, but just sand for a few strokes and then wipe off like I just did and inspect. Look to see if what, what that was like six strokes back and forth. Look to see how much of the paint you're leveling and if you need to stop and go to a new area or continue sanding till it meets your expectations. And the thing I wanna say is I wanna quote my good friend Jason Rose. I love this quote, top coat hardness is an unknown variable. <laughs> and it's true, top coat hardness is an unknown variable. S really soft paint's gonna sand easy, just like it buffs easy. Really hard paint is gonna sand really hard. You're gonna have to work longer at it to abrade it, to level it, to get it to where you want it to be. But you don't know that until you, the first time you bring your block down and start sanding. And Why don't you tell them about the little bumps and stuff that you're seeing in there? Oh, I am happy to say that. So this, I think, is a, like really a garage paint job. So this is what's called DIP. See the little dots there? It's called dirt in paint. So when it's painted, pieces of dirt fill in there. So this thing's never going to look like a million bucks, but again, it's a great training car. I'd rather train my students on this than a demo hood any day of the week because they're going to learn so much about how to sand and how to buff with the wool pad and how to polish with the orb orbital. It's just a really great training vehicle. Now, when it comes to going along this edge up here, here's what I teach for that. So again, rule of thumb. Okay. Here's my thumbnail distance away. So what I'm gonna do, instead of big long strokes, I'm just gonna come up and sand like this. And as I move my sanding block over, I'm gonna keep my sanding pattern very tight. That means I'm gonna only move over like about three eighths of an inch at a time. And um, that way I have a very uniform flat sanding pattern. And you can see how I'm staying just about, I didn't even see that's about seven sixteenths of an inch away. But what that means, Yancey, what does that mean, Mr. Does that Michael? means I can come down and bring my spinning wool pad and I can buff that out and pull those sanding marks out without putting any pressure on this edge or this um, part of the cab right here and burn through that edge. I mean, I have a quote that goes so like this. you're saving the paint. <laughs> I have a quote that goes like this. Words cannot describe the heart sinking feeling that overcomes you when you discover you've burnt through the paint on some other person's car. I mean, it's just like, oh, look yeah, what I did. Yeah, it's a gut check moment for sure. Oh, it definitely is. Anyway, look at all the paint that's coming off. Okay, so let me go back up here and we're just gonna knock out a little section here because you remember, I gotta save this for my class. They're paying big bucks to get down here uh, where I get to work them like a slave master. You know, there's no chairs, there's no tables, there's no uh, PowerPoint, there's no sitting. I don't even give breaks in these classes. You get about a 15 minute lunch break and that's it. You need a break, you take off and go sit for a minute and then you come back. Take your own break. Okay, now come down here and look at this. Now, can you get all the way over here to see where the orange pill? Let me come around over so there. So orange pill is basically hills and valleys. All right, let's break this down. Show us where the orange pill. Okay, so 
here where you see like black, little black spots and then there's dull spots, those black spots are lower. They're the valley. So orange pills like hills and valleys. Hold your finger in one spot. There and, and the reason they're so black is they haven't been sanded yet. So I can tell I still need to sand here. If you come out here, so this is fairly sanded, this is sanded, this is sanded, but this is still got some pill in it. So let me just come down here and knock this out. I'm gonna wipe this off. There, now it's just as flat as all the areas around them. So let me go ahead and just finish. Now here's, this is interesting. See the pigtails in here? Yeah, so there's pigtails, so when they did the prep work, so that's before they put down the primer and the base coat, they left, it looks like they left uh, pigtails in their, their prep work. And now they've kind of bled through to the clear coat, but when we sand this and then buff it, they should disappear. Okay. And if you're new at this, you want to sand in straight lines. Um, if you get really skilled at this, you can use what's called the X pattern. Uh, the X pattern is a technique that I was taught by my longtime friend over at Huntington Beach Body Works. And now I can't think of Rich his Evans. name. Rich Evans. Yeah. <laughs> I, was saying I always get stuck on his name. Um, we actually, I was in charge of the team that sanded down the Meguiar's trucks, the big semi trucks with the flames going down the sides. And uh, that was a hell of a project. We did all the work on the outside in, in the sun. Um, but on I was in black. charge on black paint with flames and stuff. What and, time um, of year were you doing this? But, but Rich Evans taught me, if you start out sanding with, I think we were starting out with 1,000 grit, then we went to 12, then to 15, then to 2,000, then we started buffing. And um, I want to see, can you see these lines through here, this pattern? Yes. I okay, can. so that's, that's a fairly tight pattern, but what I want to do is I want to keep it even tighter. Okay, so you don't even see those lines. That's by just moving over, just barely moving over, like three-eighths of an inch at a time. Okay, so that is a nice tight pattern. What you don't want to do is make what I call W's or M's. That would look like this okay yeah, that's bad yeah that's bad you'll so, never get it completely flat well it just won't look right it'll take long to buff out so keep a very tight pattern okay then after you've sanded to the point where you look at the paint and you can go you know what that looks good to me i've leveled the orange pill i'm not going to get all these uh, dirt nibs out of here i don't know how much clears on here um, i'm hoping it's got some paint because my students are going to find out if it doesn't the good news is the guy that owns this who's probably watching he doesn't care if we make a mistake. These aren't high dollar street rods he, he buys and sells. Boom, here we go. That is sanded, hand sanded. All right, let me get the finishing shot here. All right. Whew, I'm winded. Okay, <laughs> now that was 1500 grit if you want to capture that. Peach 1500 by Eagle Abrasives okay. by Kovacs. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to machine sand. I've already got a, I think this is 2500. Okay. This is their Bufflex system. This is also their interface pad. Now, interface pads are very important for both hand sanding and machine sanding, and they offer a couple of different ones. This, again, is their medium. And why are they important? Uh, they're important because it helps the face of the sandpaper to stay in 100% contact with the curve of this panel. Um, it also uh, smooths out the sanding action and also decrease, decreases the aggressiveness of it. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, before I hit that with this, I do want to show this little guy. And a lot of people have been emailing me and asking me, when are the six millimeter drive units gonna get in? This is the original, cause that's handwritten number six by me. The engineers of Flex made this for me. I told them the three was too small, the 12 was too big, give me a five, six, seven, or eight, and they sent me a six. And now they are available and you can tell they're imprinted. That's how you can tell the ones from the factory. Chris Metcalf called me, said 500 of them have arrived to the US shore. Okay, so these are great for doing thin panels. Look at this thin panel up here. And actually, this will fit up here for the fresh air cowl yeah, well, vent. Make okay. life a lot easier. Yeah, and so, uh, but I'm gonna use this to edge the panel. And usually what I tell people to do, and all these tools are different, but this one here has a digital um, speed uh, control here. And you wanna put this thing down, and you wanna see pad rotate, sanding disc rotation. And I don't really have any, so I'm gonna bring the speed up. I don't really have any. Here's speed three. Now I got some pretty good rotation. So now I'm gonna just come in, I'm gonna refine, refine my hand 1500 sanding marks with 2500, and that's gonna make the buff out faster and easier, and it's also gonna keep the paint cooler because I'm not gonna be creating a lot of 
a heat from extended pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up to the six. And then this is a technique I use. See how I'm just kind of running this back and forth? And the reason why is because then I can look and gauge my progress turning 15 into 25. And this is something you want to keep a towel handy, just like when you're hand sanding. And let me show you all the, look at all the paint this 2500 grit pulled off. I mean, these Eagle abrasives sanding discs really were good. Then just take and you can either leave it off and just kind of brush it onto the towel, or I usually just turn it on and just do that. And then I come back here, always wipe this off, or you'll take this paint dust and put it right back on here. So you got to clean both the disc and the panel. And then it's going to come back here, bump this up to the four. Okay, I'm going to call that good. And notice I'm still about a thumbnail distance, but I've, I've kind of wavered a little bit closer. So that's going to schmoo that orange peel schmoo. line over. There's that technical that's word. That's a technical term. Now I'm going to kind of finish this line up here, back up to the four. And my good friend Kelly Harris, he always teaches people that, you know, you, you sand a little bit inside of the pattern that you want to sand, and then with your finer grits, move it out a little bit. And that'll uh, give it a uniform appearance, but also make the buff out quicker, faster, and easier. Okay, so now I've edged this, so all I got to do now is come back with the big boy and just flatten out the rest of this. Now this is the Flex X. Right, hold on, before you keep going now, do you want to explain for some of the new people that are out there that maybe do not know why you have to go through the different levels of sandpaper? Oh, sure, um, uh, and, and here's the answer, you don't have to. You could sand this truck or whatever you're working on with, say a thousand grit, and then start, start in with your compound and pad and start buffing, but you're gonna be pressing really hard and buffing for hours because the sanding marks are really deep. So what you want to do is, you know, in my opinion, it's better to spend more time sanding and keep refining your sanding marks, marks to a higher and higher grit level. And that'll make the buff out faster. And it also makes it cooler to the paint. Heat is never good for clear coats. You don't want to get it hot. So you want to keep it cool. And in today's modern world, I think, I think in the Eagle Abrasives line, the highest they go up to is 25 or 3,000. They might go to 4,000. Um, but in the 3M line, you can go to 8,000. So I always tell people, let your budget be your guide, okay? If it's your project and you got unlimited funds, sand out to 8,000, start buffing. You know, if, if, if you're on a budget, then maybe finish out at 2,000. But another variable for how hard it will be to pull your sanding marks out with, with any kind of compound and fiber pad or, or however you want to do it, is top coat hardness. The harder the paint, the harder it's going to buff. So really hard paints, you do want to try to finish out at higher grit levels to make the buffing quicker, faster, and easier. Okay. Okay, so this is the Flex, I think they call us the FX3411. Now this is a 1.6 millimeter wood, it's for wood, it's a, what's called a finishing sander. It's not for doing rough work, it's for finishing. And I know some of you experts out there say, well, Mike, yeah, that's the wrong tool for this. Well, right now, this is all that Flex has that I have access to that's cordless, and I love the cordless aspect to it. But also, you can say on paper that that's the wrong way to do it, but I'm telling you, it works in practice, and that's really all I care about. Well, it's not kind of how the porta cable came to be. It was a sander. Yeah, the porta cable was a wood sander, and someone figured out it maintained pad rotation for buffing out car paint. Yeah. Okay, so then same thing. Now I'm just gonna run this back and forth a few times. And now I, I don't have to worry about getting to the edge because I did all the edge work with a little three inch disc, which is a lot easier to control. And let me just show you, look how much paint is coming off with even a 2500 grit. So again, I'm just gonna remove this. And you should be wearing a, a mask when you do any of this kind of work. And this, that's, those two passes probably refined it, but I'll do a couple more just to make sure. And of course, overlap your passes by about 50% or 75%. You know, I saw this guy, his business name was overlapped by 75%. I thought, that's pretty, that's pretty crafty there. And if you can't figure out why, why that's different or unique, 
It just means he's doing better work. He's overlapping by 75, not just 50. So it would take longer to buff out a car doing that, but your work would probably turn out better. Anyway, then that's how that works. And again, this little on and off button here, and you got multiple speeds, so you can, you can bring this up to turbo speed is what they call that. That'd probably be good. All right, now, question. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, that'd probably be good for wood, but not car paint. Yeah, no, you go through really quick. That'd be grinding process. Uh, <laughs> how does one know when their sandpaper is done and when they need to replace? Oh, that's a good question. You know, you just have to be at one with the paper, you know? Oh, my God. It's called the zen. It's a zen moment. All zen right. moment of sanding. No, just look. If, you, if you're looking, it's not, you move. If I were to take that disc and move on to new territory and I'm just not seeing no action, it's probably time to either clean the disc or switch to a fresh disc. Okay. And that's about the only way you can gauge. Okay, so this is sanded. So now the next thing I need to do is I need to pull my sanding marks out. And someone was asking me the other day about my rotary polisher. I love to show this thing off. This is a prototype. This, you can see the color red is different. It's also metric. So this was hand built in Germany, sent to me to test out before they went public with the cordless rotary. And I always tell people the biggest mistake I've made is I haven't counted or kept track of how many cars and boats I've buffed out with it, but it's a lot. Just one or two. Just one or two. And it, I've, I've ne no service, it just keeps on going. So this is the NSP 150. Oh, I should have brought over the abrasive powders. Oh, I got, got some right here. This is interesting abrasive technology and everybody knows me, I'm all about the abrasive technology. So this is what it looks like. It's this super fine powder and these are perfectly round spheres with facets on them, little edges on them, but perfectly round. So no matter where that abrasive is on the surface, it's always cutting. And they're highly concentrated, so you don't need a whole lot. So where's my buffer Which pad? Which is something that you needed to learn. Yeah, this still has a safety seal, so let me pull that out. This is the mistake you always make on TV. You go to spray something and it doesn't spray. You go to pour, nothing pours. Shake well. It's like Tom Cruise and cocktails. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Okay. See what I got to work with here, people? Whoops. Got a little too much on there. But when you're starting out with the wool pad, you need a little extra because the pad is going to absorb good some recovery. of the product. Good yeah, recovery. Good recovery, yes. Okay, let's just kind of break this pad in a little bit. Remember, camera guy doesn't like wearing it. Camera guy doesn't like to wear compound splatter? No. And notice how I'm tipping this up on edge, and what I'm doing is I'm actually getting some product onto the edge. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull our marks up. I like to go up to the three. I'm gonna push on this a little bit. And this is what's gonna really tell me if this is hard paint or soft paint. That's one section pass. Here's a second section pass. Can you see those sanding marks oh, are just right melting, now. just melting out of the paint. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna call, this is on the, the soft side of medium. Okay, so now I need to come and get my edges. So for that, I wanna teach a technique called finger painting. Okay, so usually when I'm working on a car, I'll just apply some product down someplace on the car, doesn't matter where, take my finger and paint this along the edges I wanna buff. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna put two things down there. Do you know what they are, Yancey? It's gonna put the product down there and also show you where you've been and haven't been. Close. It's gonna lay down lubrication and abrasive technology. You need both when you're buffing. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna I wanna be cognizant of how this pad's spinning. It's spinning clockwise as I look down on it. So what I wanna do is I wanna actually start up here, and that way it's gonna pull the pad the product into itself. Not spray it all over your camera lens. Ah, uh, thank you. Now I'm actually pushing, pushing pretty hard as I pull those sanding marks out right along that edge. Let me bring my speed up. They're gone. Okay, let me, uh, I can grab it from right here. I just don't want to splatter you. Okay. And the, the goal of using a rotary ANSI is to make it look so easy, like anybody can do it. I don't even have to look at what I'm doing and I'm pulling those sanding marks out. Boom. They are gone. Now I'll just grab this. I have some sanding marks on the edges. 
I'll grab that, pull it out real quick. Now, are you pushing down hard on your... I'm pushing down about 10 pounds. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I call chopping. I'm chopping on this thing. When I was a kid, my mom and my dad used to order three cords of wood to the house every year. Me and my brother had to go out with a, a maul and a splitting wedge and an axe and split it, chop it up, carry been it around the back that. of the house and heat the house all winter long with firewood. Yep, been there, done that. And uh, good exercise, but I remember chopping. Okay, so I pulled out all my sandy marks. This, this I think I have. Come down here and look. So there's swirls. Here's a little bit of sandy marks right there. Can you see it's kind of yeah. dull and hazy looking? Across the edge is all good though. All I see is your holograms. Yep. Okay, let me just pull those out real quickly just to make sure they are gone. There's a drop of product. That would be a piece I drop my. And always, I did this earlier, but always clean your pad with a spur. Bring this up to high speed, run that across there, go all around the edge. Make sure that thing's clean, clean it often. Um, if you could see me on security cameras, you'd see me clean my pad after every panel, easily. Okay. Okay, they're gone. Okay, so now the next step would be to pull out your holograms. Holograms are, you know, um, holograms by my definition, as I wrote it in three of my how-to books, is a specific scratch pattern inflicted by the use of a rotary polisher and usually fiber, so a wool pad, but you could do it with foam, microfiber, and the abrasive technology. But it's a pattern that's specific to a single rotating action of a rotary. If you're using an orbital, it can't be, it can't be holograms, it could be Micromarring, but it's not holograms. Okay, this is Mr. Rupes, Bigfoot 21. And I'm gonna go ahead and try, I have a cutting pad on here, but after seeing how that paint buffed out, I'm gonna throw on a soft foam polishing pad. This is where the test box comes in. And we will see a 45. This is a finishing polish. We'll pull out those holograms. So we're skipping 95. We're skipping 95, that's like a medium cut polish. This is a finishing polish. Same kind of abrasive technology I showed you in the little jar. Okay, and, and I, I keep telling people I have to retrain myself to put pea sized drops. It's hard sometimes to get a pea sized drop out of the dispenser, but that's as good as I can get it. Okay, this would tackle the entire hood easily. Okay, let me turn the speed down. Okay, I just wanna kinda break in this pad. Let the abrasive technology kind of migrate around. And now I'm gonna bring this up to about the five setting. There's one section pass. We'll do four and wipe off. Two. Low pressure, weight of the tool. That's the number 16 tool, by the way. I have the six and the 16. Oh man, Yancey, look at that. I can see the reflection. Two sanding and two steps and near perfection. It's not perfect, but it's, that's good. I would, it's a, I got I, a lot better than what it started. I would ceramic coat that. So, I mean, that's some, that's yeah, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to a, put a tape line down. Yeah, um, did you get a light? light? Yeah. Yes, I always have a light. Un momento. All right. Then just do me a favor, give me a wipe over here. Okay. Just so that we can get the dust and stuff off. Yeah. Right. Okay. Is that my hole in that where you like it? Oh, put it All right, there's the before. You can see all the orange peel and the pigtails, everything, <laughs> modeling. Garbage. And then up here, which my light doesn't even want to 
So there's like a black oil. If, if you come over here, you can actually get the overhead fluorescent light tubes. Okay. And over here, they're all modeled. And then where we sanded, they're very defined. There we go. All right. There you go. See how the clear the tubes are overhead? And we're just going to follow that down. And it goes to one big blob. To ugly. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so that's called DOI, distinction of image. It means uh, a mirror is 100% DOI. So anytime you're sanding, you remove orange peel, modeling, dirt and paint, any kind of surface texture, is to make the surface as flat as possible. Then of course, when you buff out your sanding marks, you restore a crystal clear finish and it'll reflect like a mirror. So you've heard the term in the car detailing industry, a mirror finish. Oh, That's what I they mean, what you did there. get a mirror finish. I see what you and did there. And then after that, of course, you would coat it. Let's see, I've probably got something back here ready to go. I just, I leave it for your, I think, or you can demonstrate it. I was just gonna say, you probably could leave it for your student. Come down, apply. This is the Nano Resin MX. And, um, you know, everybody has a crosshash pattern. I was listening to one of my friends talk about doing a circle. You know, here's. Uh, I was wondering if you saw that video. Oh, I saw that video. I got a gimmicky way to put tire dressing on, by the way. <laughs> Anyway, hey, I was, you know, however you get to shiny, that's all that's important. You know, of course, hey, there's a million ways to skin a cat. There is a million ways. And I don't think the cat's going to like that. So did I get in trouble once with some viewer? I think you did. <laughs> Peter probably pissed at you. Okay, boom. There's, uh, there's sanded twice, compounded once, polished once, ceramic coated. Kick this, stick a fork in this, kick it out the door. It's done. All right. Hang out right there for, for me, will you, Mike? Okay. I'm coming back around. All right. Back on to you over there, taking a drink. Okay, two seconds, people. We'll get to your questions. And I would like to apologize for the audio issue that we had over there. I don't know what was going on with the sound. His microphone just didn't want to work today. That's what it seemed like. Okay. okay. I... I have. Right, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, Mike. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. All right. Camera, camera guy, they said. I just um, was texting with a gentleman, and here it is. Let's see. Uh, let me go to info, info, 1981 Corvette. Okay, so for our big three-day class coming up the first weekend of May, uh, the students that are attending that are going to get to dry sand, cut and polish, then ceramic coat, a black 1981 Corvette, not a demo hood, pretty cool. You know, and one of the things I think is kind of fun is we, we do the sanding of the car from start to finish in a day. Okay, you can spend three days and four days on it, but you know, I'm gonna cover a lot of other techniques while you're here. You're gonna learn so much, it's all hands-on. Uh, but the sanding portion, I mean, we knock it out in a day. You learn everything you need to learn. And here's the deal, I'm not here to make you a perfect at this. I'm gonna give you a foundation to build on. It's your job to go back into your world and then practice makes perfect. You know, go get a hood off of a car in the wrecking yard, uh, rent a car for the weekend, sand it down, buff it out. And then when you got the courage, someone comes along and says, hey, you know, can you do this? You can say, yeah, I've got the confidence. You know what I got coming up, Yancey? What do you have A 1968 up? Camaro, complete dry sand cut and buff. In fact, the owner probably watching this, he's uh, working on painting the car right now. So we'll have it here at the shop and uh, I'll share some tips and techniques as I work through that project. Okay, you ready to get to some of these sure. questions? Sure, yeah. Okay, and yes, once again, I am the voice from the nether. Uh, ignore, I guess that's your notes for your class. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have ha sloppy handwriting, but those are, um, that's actually three of the techniques that we teach Oops. in the class. The first one's multiple step, then one step, then another one step. Uh, this Impala here, though, that's the multiple step. The Corvette is the one step. And then you see the one step with the number one. That's what we're doing to the red car. That's one step ceramic AIO. Okay, so let's get to this. We have first from Puerto Rico. He says ready to roll as always and always number one. Uh, comment on any of the videos that I, I do, you do. I mean, guys everywhere. How does he uh, do it? I don't know. 
Optical clarity detailing. Hope you guys are having a good day. What grit would you start with when removing orange peel? Does it matter if the paint is hard or soft or do you always start with the same grit when sanding? That's a good question. You know, um, in our classes, kind of like I was just saying, I'm not here to make you an expert if it's your first time, I'm here to give you foundation. So. I start out with 1500 grit and whatever we get, we get, you know, it isn't about making this car perfect. This car is going to look so much better than what it's going to do is it's going to teach you how to move your hand, how to prep the car, how to follow up through the multiple steps. So we start out hand sanding with 1500 and then we switch over to 25 by machine and then we go to compounding and that's a full day class and the car is going to come out amazing. But if you're doing this for a customer car, you really need to have a variety of sanding sheets on hand. Uh, because the harder the paint, the lower the grit in order to accomplish the goal of removing the orange peel. But in a perfect world, in a perfect world, you'd want to, you know, I'd always want to start with 1500. Look, you know, if 1200, maybe a thousand, but the higher I can get to where I, the grit I can use to get to the goal, I, that's where I'd rather be. But you got to do some testing because as my good friend, Jason Rowe says, top code hardness is an unknown variable. That it is. Uh, all right, let's go to this one, which is I thought was fitting for this. All right, I just thought it was funny. Lambert's Auto Detail. I usually peel my oranges with my hands or a knife. Curious to see what Mike has in store for us. <laughs> How do you peel your orange, hands or knife? I got these oranges my wife sent me, and about the only way I can get the peel off them is to chew them off with my teeth. So he goes the caveman technique. Caveman <laughs> technique. <laughs> uh, it's okay. a cross between a grapefruit and an orange. I forget what it's called. Maybe Victor or uh, Chris can answer this one. Is Amazon still selling the part kit of the NSP, pro, uh, NSP compounds? If you guys could answer that for me, that's Tundra Whisperer. We have Kyle coming in here. He's saying hello. We have Chief Carlos Cassiano. He's saying hello also. Uh, Boris Moreno, I want it, but not for a good in English. I need Spanish. Okay, well, maybe we can have AI. We We're teaching a Spanish a, a class. We have a Spanish uh, translator for my class coming up in Escondido, California, March 23rd and 24th. And the 23rd is all paint correction. The 24th is dry sanding. So get signed up for that class. Okay, we have Jack's Auto Detailing Services. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is the beginning, so a bunch of them are hellos. Don saying hello, and uh, I like the yellow card in your profile pic, that's pretty nice. Uh, Dano Baker, oh my gosh, you're in the 70s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm from the 70s. Okay. I graduated from high school in 79. I was, I was around when Greece was the big movie at the drive-ins. Oh my goodness, you're dating yourself. Yeah, my friend Barry Thill at, at MTE, he told me I was older than Dirt. I'm thinking, you know, Dirt's a little older. <laughs> Just barely. <laughs> Just we got little. Tundra Whisperer saying sweet charger in the back. Thank you, that is my baby. Um, and Dan O's coming back on here again. No chairs, no sitting, no PowerPoint. There is a bathroom. Yeah, there is a bathroom. <laughs> There's actually an office chair. I have one chair here. If you need to sit down, go grab my chair. Okay. Da, 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 da. Nope, Mike never loses his voice. Sorry. Uh, oh, here's one maybe people don't know. Any birthday cake left over from Grant no. Country? No, absolutely gone. That was a lemon olive oil cake. It was absolutely delicious. My wife made for me. Thank you. Had a great birthday, by the way. Awesome birthday. All right, we have Corey Richard coming in here. Uh, what up, Mike and Yancey? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Sounds working, there we go. Yeah, sorry about the audio thing there. I gotta check your microphone. How did you pack that coming back from MTE? Carefully. All right. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, hello, we got uh, Restyling Auto Care coming in, greetings, hello. Uh, one, one minute, free class. Uh, Yancey will be here, by the way, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for all three days, and he's gonna be shooting some video uh, showing what these classes look like. And, um, you know, yes. I always encourage people, if you really wanna take your skills to a higher level, find a class anywhere around you. I mean, there's some great instructors, Jason Rose, Rennie Doyle, Justin Lobato, Todd, um, uh, Cooper Ryder? Todd Cooper Ryder. I mean, there's some established names and 
I mean, when these guys are talking, shut up and listen and just follow what they say, and you're going to learn a lot. You know, and if it works out for you to come out to sunny Stewart, Florida, uh, come out here for one of my big three-day classes. They are really hard and a lot of fun. I, t I tell you, sanding down a boat on the third day, you're tired. You're done. <laughs> it's a lot of work. So I let okay. you come in. At, we start the class at 8.30. I give you an extra hour to sleep in. Otherwise, we start at 7.30 Friday and Saturday mornings. Okay, this one's funny. Uh, hello, happy V-Day sanding. Is everyone scary part? But it's really not that hard. Very true. You know, it's, it's mostly just about um, taking your time using good technique. Um, I, I will tell you this, and, and I know uh, there's a lot of guys out there that spend a lot more time, but the last three cars I've sanded down, one was a 69 Charger, 69 GTO, 1967 Mustang California Special. I knocked all three of them out in a day. I start early, I don't take breaks, I finish them, go home. It's usually a 12 hour day, but I knock them out in a day. Okay. Um, yes, Mike does work. He is probably the hardest working man I've ever been around. So yeah, it is, he, he's impressive. Uh, all right, Kyle, Lau, Kyle Lowe, all right. He, it's a two part, basically. Okay. He put it in two different comments. Um, so I'm gonna tell you on both, then you can answer them both at one time, okay? So the first one is, are larger wool pads best for the rotary? Then he comes back in, I used a five inch on a rotary and didn't like it well. You wanna take um, a stab at you know, that? It, some of it comes down to personal preference, but here's what I tell you. If, if you're just learning to use a rotary, it's easier to learn how to use a smaller pad. Um, but I'm kind of like you. This is a seven and a half inch pad with one and a, one and a quarter inch fiber length from Lake Country. And um, I find this to really be a nice pad. I will tell you, while I was at Mobile Tech Expo, I see um, a couple of new wool pads on the market. Rupes has one and Lake Country has one for the marine line. For the, they have one for comp heavy cutting and for polishing. And I'm interested in getting that one for polishing and trying it for car paint because I liked how the fibers felt. But the thing about a long fiber pad is they just clean easier. And that's important no matter what kind of pad, you got to clean it often. And short fiber pads are very hard. They don't clean well. But um, yeah, I just, I don't know. For me, using a rotary is like second nature, so I'm really happy with the seven and a half inch on the flex cordless rotary. Okay. Uh, and then just there's putting some, uh, looks like Victor's the one that answered about the NSP system available on Amazon, so the links are in the, in the comments. Then also, they also put the links up for the Spanish translator class, so that's in the comments also. Uh, Cathal. I think I'm saying your name correctly. If not, I'm so sorry. Hey, Mike and Nancy, I've never used wool pads, only microfiber and foam. Is there a preferred type of backing plate I would need for wool pads? When you up on your edge, does the plate pose a risk? Uh, no, a good question, by the way. Now, um, when you said that, are, are, is he using orbital polishers or is it rotary? I'm guessing rotary. I'm gonna have to go with ro rotary on this. this. This has a plastic cupping um, that goes on the inside of the Velcro around the pad. And then it goes up, it, it, what, it, what that happens is if you, if you push hard, what happens is the backing plate will never come in contact with the paint because you've got this plastic liner that's curved this like a little pad? bowl. Yeah, you can show that one. All right, I can, yeah. just, I'm over here, I can do it up close. So it's, it's not an issue. Now some yeah. pads don't have that. When I worked at 3D, yeah, uh, they sold some really nice wool pads, but there's no plastic, that cupping isn't there. And yeah, you could, you could go up on edge and dig the edge of the pad or the edge of the backing plate easily into the paint if you weren't so careful. So it, it basically what it does is it hides the edge of the, or protects the edge of the backing plate. It protects plate the paint from, from the, edge the edge of the backing of the back. plate. That's yeah. what I meant. Thank you for yep. thinking what I was doing. So. Okay, um, lastly, we're gonna go right here, which I think is the best one to leave on this. Dan Baker. For all the people that come down to your class, they want to know, this is the industry internet searching for this question, and you must answer it right here, right now. Okay. For all time being, this is what will be from here on out. Can they swim in your pool? <laughs> no, by the way, that's a, that's a 50 foot pool. Um, 
and it is a really nice pool. It's at our condo, but our condo is mostly made up of elderly people. We're the youngest couple there, so I usually have the pool to myself. It has a built-in hot tub. Uh, a lot of people might not know this. I'm a distance swimmer, and if I do 110 lengths, which is 55 laps up and back, that's a mile. So my morning workouts are usually about a mile in the morning with hand paddles. I pull pretty hard. It keeps me in good shape for my age. Uh, good cardio, too. Keeps your, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. But Daniel, you come on down, you come over, we'll hit the pool. <laughs> Ooh, he said it, you heard it here, people. Yeah, the, sometimes, the temperature there ranges between 87 and 93 year round, so it's never like, brr, it's cold. It's always like getting into a bath. It's, you know, it's kind of warm for working out of it, it is nice. You know what I was kind of thinking? Yes. I think, what do you call it, Jim. Look how nice this looks. Takes your sanding. Yeah. Material. Yeah. And just puts it in here. Oh. Put some lubrication in I it. I don't know about that. Puts it back in the bottle. I no. never play the chemist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is there any other little things that people need to know about? Um, no, the class this weekend, we got a one day class. If you're, if you know, if the, the three day classes, basically all our classes are $600 a day. It's five ninety five. We have a one day class. If that fits your budget coming up Saturday, June 8th. And basically that's the first day of this three day. Where, so where's that at? Right here in Sunny okay. Florida. So I'm gonna bring in for that class probably three to four cars, but it's the same program we do on the first day. All hands on, multiple techniques, no chairs, no sitting, no PowerPoint. And then there's another three day coming up and that's the first week into May. I think it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the third, the fourth and the fifth. Uh, March 23rd and 24th will be in Escondido, California. You need to get signed up for that before it sells out. And where can they find all this information? Because I know uh, you're rambling. DrBeasleys.com. Like By the way, next week's live broadcast is going to be from the American Muscle Car Museum. Uh, Victor, if you could pull a picture of that 1956 Mercury Turnpike Cruiser up. This is a concept car, one of one built. And the, huh. my good friend there, Ed Dedict and his team at the American Muscle Car Museum, they've been invited to show this car at the Amelia Island, Island Concourse d'Elegance, and they've invited me to come up and assist getting the car ready using all Dr. Beasley's products. So while we're there Wednesday working on this car out in the shop, uh, we'll set the cameras up and we'll do our live broadcast from the American Muscle Car Museum, which is an amazing place. It is. If you guys are ever down in this neck of the woods and get a chance to go over there and look at it. <laughs> and, it's, you know, and you know a guy. <laughs> and you know a guy. Because it's not open to the public. Um, but, well, they put on, they, they do do some uh, public events. They so. do public charity events. It's yeah. all about make, raising money for good, good uh, causes. And what, if I remember correctly, the guy that owns it, that started the... He's in Mark Pelock. Yeah, he does ingredients for dog foods. Yes. And he's got an amazing collection of cards all off of ingredients of dog foods. So it's pretty impressive. The most amazing. And he's got three tanks. Tanks. Tanks, like Panther tanks from Poland. He's, yeah, my friend Eaton. Okay, so it's no longer a car museum. It's anything that moves museum. Well, we make matte coatings from tanks. They're matte. Okay, you know, all right. Camouflage uh, mask. Yeah, okay, well, on that, I'm going to take my check mix, and I'm going to go over <laughs> here, sit down, and I'm going to watch you. Oh, wait a minute. You're, oh, the students get to do this. You lost yeah. out today. Yeah, so what I like about my cl classes is kind of like Tom Sawyer whitewashing the fence. It is. For all these cars, I dial in and do the test spot so they know what they're going to do with the rest of the car. Then I walk around and tweak technique. So uh, they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of work. But uh, get signed up. I'd love to have everybody on planet Earth come to one of these classes. All right. And uh, so that wraps up today's episode. I hope that you guys enjoy it. We're right at an Five. hour. So we're going to get at this timing yep. thing. Sorry about the audio. Yeah, sorry about the audio. Um, I got to check out his microphone because he likes the little boom mic coming over this way. But we'll check that out. Um, <laughs> Because I'm moving. It's because he's a mover and groover. But at the same time, if you can, please do share, like, subscribe, all that thing. Hit the notification bell so that way you know when we're going live or anytime that they do post something up on YouTube or when they go over on their Facebook pages, they get notified and you can read the updated content because he is constantly putting stuff out. I mean, every time I turn around, there's a new article, a new little video about how to do this, how to do that. So if you ever need to know, it's good that I know him because I don't need to know. I just like, hey, Mike. So anyways, with that, I'm going to go eat my check mix. You got and, it. And uh, are you going to go play cop now? Is that what you're going to do? Uh, no, it's Valentine's Day. I'm going to go take my wife out to dinner. Remember the rule of thumb. Ah, smart man. <laughs> All right. What do we say, Mike? Uh, hey, uh, see you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're the dynamic duo. We are the dynamic duo. All right. Bye, all. Bye, all.